we're going to make a basic Hello World module. We'll start by opening up our terminal. We want to use the su command to become root so that we can access commands like ncmod and rmmod. We also want to navigate to the directory we installed or extracted our Linux kernel to. This is where mine is. Once you're here, you want to make a directory for your module. Uh, I'm going to call mine your module since I've already made a my module. And once you're in there, we're going to go ahead and create our C file. So you're going to want to name that the same as you want your module to be called, such as your module.c. And we start out by including two header files. The first one is module.h. That gives us access to uh, module specific functions and definitions and structures. And the second one is init.h, which is for initialization. We also have to declare the license that our kernel module will be distributed under. It doesn't really matter what you put here as far as compilation goes. You can put whatever you like. We're going to go ahead and put uh, dual BSD slash GPL. We use this macro, and if you don't have that here, it won't compile, so you do have to have something. Now we make our two functions. They're static functions, meaning they can only be accessed from uh, uh, other members in this object. The first one is our init function. This is what's called by the kernel when this module is loaded. And we're just going to have that use print k, which is the kernel's print function, to print a message to say that the, me the module has been loaded. The kernel alert macro indicates that this message is of log level alert, which is fine to use for anything that you want to print. And return zero means that everything went well. We return zero if there are no errors, and you return an error number if there was an error. Print k is going to print to the syslog file, which we'll look at in a few minutes. It's not going to print to a terminal because when the kernel is running, there is no active terminal for a module. You can name these functions whatever you like. This was the init function. The next one is the exit function. This is what's called when rmmod is used or for some reason the kernel module is removed. So when that happens, we're just going to print another message to the system log to say, alert, this module has been removed successfully. Okay. And then the last thing we want to do is take our two functions. So sorry, this should be a void return type. We want to take our two functions and register them using the module init and module exit macros. We just pass them the function names and it will register them for use by the kernel. So there you go, two functions and the registration, and we're all set in the source. We're going to go ahead and save this file. The next thing we want to do is make our make file so it can be built properly. There's a more complicated version of this on the slides. We'll make a very simple one here. It should do the same thing. First thing we want to do is use objm to add our object file to the list of objects which should be compiled as kernel modules. So yourmodule.o will use the file yourmodule.c and create the kernel object file. So you should name that whatever your module is with an O on the end. And then we make the target. So we're just going to have one target and call it all. You can make it clean if you'd like. All is going to use the make command with the minus C flag, which is going to tell it to uh, look for the make file in this directory and run that first. This is going to be dependent on your kernel version, so I use uname-r to get the current kernel version. And then we have the flag m, which tells it to look in this directory, and then we tell it to build modules. Essentially, that's all there is to your kernel makefile and your kernel source. We're going to save that file, run make, and it's going to print several object files. It's going to make several object files for us. Uh, particularly, it makes a .ko or a kernel object file. And we can use the ncmod command on that. And it gives us our module. You can use lsmod to list modules, or you could just take a look at the syslog file here in varlog syslog. You see it does print that the module was loaded. 
then we can try to remove it with rmod and we can double check the file again and see that it was removed and that's all there is to building a kernel module